This is Andre Taylor. You might know me for my content and speaking on business excellence, entrepreneurship, and luxury. But another aspect of my identity is music lover, a musician for fun. I play the piano and I'm a big jazz fan. Here I am at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola, a jazz spot in New York City next to a drawing of the great Dizzy Gillespie. Here I snapped a photo of Herbie Hancock at a book signing. And here I am with author Jonathan Cain, son of photographer Art Cain, who famously captured the greatest jazz musicians in Harlem. But if you really know me, you know my favorite all-around musician and entertainer is George Benson. George is a legend as a musician and singer and has dominated in jazz, R&B, and pop, and he's done it for a long time. I've gone to countless George Benson concerts in the U.S. and abroad. I have tons of albums, CDs, downloads, magazine articles, books, you name it. My sons even will have a George Benson album spinning when I visit. Now, the connection to George Benson began unknowingly as a kid in Brooklyn while at the Wynn School of Music. I had a piano teacher that opened me up to what being a musician was about. His name was and is Ronnie Foster. He was really an organ player, but in just a few sessions, he opened my mind. He showed me how to play songs I wanted to play that were on the radio and how to invent while playing, known as improvisation. Ronnie taught me tricks I was craving for that my classical piano teacher just didn't show me. Now what I didn't know was that Ronnie Foster was being mentored by a rising jazz guitarist named George Benson. One week I arrived at music school excited to learn more, only to find that Ronnie had, for some reason, decided not to return to the music school. Well, it wasn't long after that that I began to learn about George Benson as he became more and more popular. And I was blown away to hear Ronnie uh, on George Benson's Weekend in LA album and other recordings. Here's Ronnie in the early days and here he is more recently with George. Well, decades later as an entrepreneur, one morning I was working in my office and listening to morning jazz on my local jazz station, WBGO, when I heard a rundown of upcoming events. George Benson was going to be performing in New Jersey, a short drive away, on October 19th. This was in 2011. Now that was about 20 days away, but I had to go out of town on business and I knew I couldn't make that concert, and I was disappointed, but I thought to myself, I'll see him the next time he's in New York. This was happening just a few days before my birthday, which is October 4th, and I noticed online that George's new album, Guitar Man, was going to be released on my birthday. I instantly pre-ordered the new release and thought, new George Benson for my birthday, not bad. Well, my birthday came and went, and on Friday morning, October 21st, I was again listening to morning jazz when I heard, tonight at Town Hall, George Benson. I said, what? Somehow I missed that George Benson had a couple of dates after that New Jersey performance and was going to be in New York that night. I immediately thought, well, I'm going. I had a meeting on Long Island that ran later than expected, but I jumped in the car after that meeting with plans to get to Town Hall in Manhattan and enjoy this concert. Now, there was a lot of traffic, you know, it's normal in New York, particularly during rush hour, lots of traffic, and I soon realized that there was no guarantee I would make it to the concert hall in time. Well, a few miles outside of Manhattan it occurred to me. I could park the car in Queens, get on the subway and I could probably get to town hall faster. So that's what I did. Now I wasn't sure which train to take, but I jumped on the first one that came into the station. In fact, 
I wasn't even sure what street Town Hall was on. I had forgotten. But I knew it was close to 42nd Street, so I got off there. I just felt like I should go up a particular staircase, so I ran up the staircase. And as I exited the subway, I realized I was exactly where I needed to be. Town Hall was right in front of me. I glanced at my watch and I realized it was 30 minutes before the show. I had gotten there just in time. While I raced to the box office, I was excited. And uh, this is what I wanted to do for weeks and it was about to happen. And I was going to see George Benson live again. This would, this would probably be my 50th time, but you know, who's counting? But as I approached the box office, my heart sank. The sign that was at the box office said, sold out, and this was not what I was expecting. There were people milling around and quite a few who wanted tickets, but the woman at the box office confirmed that there were no more, and it seemed like no one had an extra ticket to sell who was outside. Gradually, the ticket holders began going inside, and there were fewer and fewer people on the sidewalk. And I was pacing and thinking about what I was going to do. And eventually, everyone who was waiting decided to give up. And it was really just me kind of walking back and forth. I walked over to the usher. And uh, the usher was taking tickets. And we, and we got into conversation. And, and we laughed about a couple of things. And he said, no, I can't let you in without a ticket. And I told him I had planned to see George Benson for weeks. But I had just heard about tonight's performance this morning and you know, we laughed and, and I, I laughed at myself because I never even considered trying to get tickets earlier in the day it was it was I just expected to be able to see this concert and so I was kind of laughing at myself at the whole process well across from me was a, a mounted police officer who was high on his horse which is pretty common in the uh, New York theater district I walked toward the uh, police officer and we got into conversation and he said, what's happening here tonight? And I said, it's George Benson. And he said, I, I, don't, I don't know him. Uh, in shock, I said, what? You know, I began rattling off a few of his songs. Uh, the policeman uh, still uh, you know, drew a blank and he said, jazz, I guess. And, uh, you know, we, we um, stopped talking. He got into conversation with others. and. I thought for a moment, you know, should I just leave? You know, should I find something else to do tonight? It was a great night. You know, at that moment, I started to hear applause. And a few seconds later, the band started to play. The concert was starting. So the usher closed the inside door to the uh, auditorium. And although I guess this would make most people leave, I still expected to see this show. I walked away from the door and in that moment I stood quietly and I closed my eyes. I listened to the music which I could hear faintly and then I started thinking about what I liked about George Benson. I imagined myself inside sitting in a plush velvet seat enjoying the concert. I imagined the stage lights and how much I love being in this environment, live music and this great musician, all the songs that I liked. I imagined the performance rising in excitement, people dancing in the aisles, standing and applauding. I was completely lost in this. I imagined myself leaving the concert elated, surrounded by crowds who were equally elated. In a few moments, I opened my eyes and I started walking again to the police officer to chat. When I made a quick glance over at the usher and I saw a couple who appeared to be leaving the theater. I dashed toward the usher and I joked, I should get their ticket. And he said, get one and I, and I can let you in. Realizing what was happening, I ran toward the couple and I asked, are you leaving? Uh, are you coming back? Uh, do you have an extra ticket? And, and the gentleman looked at me, um, reached into his suit jacket, started feeling around, searching, and he pulled out a printed 
online ticket and he handed it to me and he said, it's yours. It had happened. I got into a sold out concert. I had a ticket. I ran up the stairs. It was a great seat, a third row balcony seat, and I had just missed about 10 minutes of the concert. You know, I sat back in my seat, thoroughly enjoying that performance, and every few minutes, uh, after every song, sometimes during the song, I would smile to myself, and I would just, I was just amazed at how this had all unfolded. The, the concert went on, it was great. It, it, went on for another 90 minutes, and the concert ended on a really high note with um, you know, George Benson's typical closing number on Broadway, which um, which had extra significance to the sold-out crowd in this Broadway theater. After the performance, everyone stood up, and, and people were coming out, and, and as, as we filed out of the theater, crowd and I was coming down the stairs from the balcony and I realized, wow, this is, this is the moment that I imagined. This is it. And the theater doors opened into a balmy October evening in Manhattan and I was just completely thrilled at my manifestation. I walked toward um, Times Square and um, I just was feeling so great and just on such a high. I, I reached into my pocket, I pulled out the ticket, and I, I, I wanted to look it over in the light. And as I was looking at it, something caught my eye, and I could hardly believe it. When I looked closer, I realized this ticket had been purchased online on my birthday, October 4th. Remember my comment? The next time he's in New York, I'll see him. Well, this was the next time. And remember my comment, George Benson for my birthday? Well, I got precisely the birthday present that I wanted. I think the couple who left the concert early actually bought the ticket for me. They even waited for the right moment to leave when there was no one else around so I could get it. Decide what you want. Make it your identity. Feel it present right now. Expect to see evidence that it's happening. And when the moment is right, accept it, claim it. Uh, you'll get sold out concert tickets and you'll get much more. Subscribe to my channel. Share this with others. And I'll see you next time.